Must go faster. Uh, must go fast. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Woo! Beautiful big crocodiles. You gotta love crocs. Whoa! What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm hanging out with my babies, Kameo and Timmy. I just gotta give them some carrot to keep them, keep them at bay for a little bit. They love to eat their. <laughs> They love to eat their carrot treats, but you know, the crocodiles like to eat too, so we're gonna go feed the crocs some chicken and rats and see how they're doing. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. All right, I'm hanging out with Miss Toothy and Aries, my beautiful crocodiles that love to eat chicken. Woo! Look at that. Come on, Aries. Come on. Come on. Woo! Beautiful big crocodiles. You gotta love crocs. Whoa! You can't get too comfortable with them because the second you let your guard down, they're gonna be right at your legs. Easy, easy, look at the food. Look at the food. Not me, I'm not the food. Good boy. Upwards to 5,000 pounds per scrunch pressure in the jaws of a croc. Right, Aries? Look at that big, beautiful tail. Aries, come on, big boy. I've known Aries since I was a little kid. Beautiful crocodile from the native village where I grew up learning how to wrestle alligators and doing shows for the public. Come on, big boy, look at the food. Woo! He's so beautiful. He's got that East Nile yellow crocodile coloration, and he's got the gorgeous colors of a Cuban croc, and he's very athletic because he has that Cuban croc in him, which allows him to jump really high. Woo! He's a big boy. All right, we want to distract him a little bit, but uh, I want to get away from him. Come on, Aries. In the water. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nice. And later this year, we're gonna be getting nice big enclosures for all the crocodiles. So we're gonna be upgrading everyone. And probably Nadia or Ziggy's gonna end up in this enclosure after we revamp it, make it nicer. Come on, big boy. Woo! Come on, big boy. Come on. Come on, easy. Uh -uh. Not my legs, not my legs. Woo! Gotta give him the food quick before he decides to get me instead. <laughs> How cool is that? Giant, beautiful crocodiles. Now that the weather's starting to warm up, their metabolism's up, and I can start feeding them good food. Ooh, look at this beautiful Cuban crocodile. You gotta love Miss Toothy. Look at this big, beautiful boy. Gorgeous yellow crocodile. And his teeth are looking beautiful. Crocs shed their teeth. They can actually go throughout thousands of new teeth in a lifetime. Beautiful boy. Ooh, looks like Miss Toothy came up on the land to get some privacy so she can eat. Now we can look at that beautiful coloration on her tail. What a gorgeous looking Cuban crocodile. How beautiful is Miss Toothy? Look at those teeth. Curved back teeth like a velociraptor. Makes them a super intense croc to be dealing with. Oh. Where are you going? I'm sorry, come back. My favorite animals in the world are crocodiles. Look at those gorgeous white teeth. And for those of you guys who've seen when we brought these crocs over to the facility, you know that his teeth were pretty nasty looking when we first got him. And he shed all those old nasty teeth and he's regrown all these beautiful, white, gorgeous looking teeth. There you go. Oh, what a beast of a crocodile. <laughs> and this toothy's back on the land. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> You beast. You happy? Little belch? There you go. You want some more? Come on, big boy. Come on, big boy. Come on. Come on. Woo! Good catch. Good boy. Good boy. Woo! Come on, big boy. Look at the food, not me. Huh? He's sneaky. Let's go feed Nadia. All right, next on the menu, we got a guinea pig that uh, Wild Cargo, the reptile shop, 
donated for food. Sadly, he passed away, but great food for a crocodile like little Nadia. Nadia, you hungry? Huh? You want some food, Nadia? Come on, Nadia. You want some food? A little guinea pig. You want a guinea? Oh, you want the guinea? There you go. Look at that. That's a big meal for a little croc. That'll hold her over for a couple weeks, make her feel nice and happy. Good protein. Right? My sweet baby. Love this crocodile. She's cranky, but she's really fun to work with. We got Ziggy hanging out right here. She's getting nice and big. Very close to getting her into her new setup. Now that we're going to be working on that new fence around the property, we can start expanding the exhibits. And of course, we got to check up on Anakin, the saltwater crocodile. He's right here. He looks like he's just chilling. I got to be careful because as he gets bigger, he's going to start acting more and more like a salty. Ooh, look here. He just looked up at me. There we go. Look at this. Ooh, look at that. The world's biggest reptile, the saltwater crocodile. So Anakin's doing good. He's getting nice and big. You can see he is like four times bigger than when I first got him. He's got these gorgeous yellows and blacks all over his body and he's starting to grow some teenager crocodile teeth. They're not skinny, see-through teeth anymore. They're starting to turn thick and white. So he's getting bigger, able to crunch down bigger food items. We're feeding him quail, rats, shrimp from the bait shop, sometimes baby dead pythons from the Everglades. So he gets a nice variety of diet to make him grow into a beautiful crocodile. And Aries, the crocodile we were just feeding, he's about a 10 foot crocodile. On average, the saltwater crocodile gets 15 to 18 feet and the record's over 21 feet long. So one day, he's gonna be the mascot of the whole facility. A beautiful giant saltwater crocodile. What do you think, Kameo? Huh? Give him a lick. You want to see the crocodile? Give him a lick. What do you think? Mm. What does he does he taste salty? No, they're found in fresh and salt water. Huh? Yes. Mm. 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 All right, we're gonna put Anakin back. We got some uh, snakes to take care of. We gotta clean the Indian cobra, Egyptian cobra. Make sure all the animals are good before we go on this new trip out of the country on an expedition to find the red-headed crate. Mm. Uh, must go faster. Uh, must go faster. Hey, buddy. I don't like it when you do that lip thing. <laughs> I don't like it when you do that lip thing. Give me. There you go. Good good job. You got a little exercise today. You get a little carrot for the exercise. You gonna waste this or you need it? Huh? Eat it. Don't waste it. What do you think, Timmy? Huh? What do you think? You want to get it? You want to get it? Oh, that could have been my finger. Oh. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> and we got Chovy, the big bull alligator. Woo, look at this big boy. You hungry? There you go. Big, beautiful bull alligator. He was a nuisance alligator in the Delray Beach area. And uh, I guess he was harassing some nursery workers in this big nursery they had down there. And Stone and a couple other alligator trappers had to go out and catch this big boy. And I came out for the, the last of it to help bring him in. And then uh, I had the option to take him home or he was going to get sent to a hunting ranch, sadly, because once an alligator is over four feet and it's a nuisance, it can't be relocated to a new area in the wild. So he had to go to captivity or he was going to get put down. And I didn't want to see that happen to this big, beautiful alligator. He could be anywhere from 25 to even 40 years old at this size. 11 footers are typically the size that ends up attacking people here in Florida. People walking their dogs on the edge of a lake. Dog gets attacked. Person gets in between them. And then everyone ends up getting hurt or killed. So you gotta respect these guys. Even though you don't hear about it too much, alligators do kill and eat people once in a while. They deserve the respect. Not as gnarly as the crocs, like the Niles and the salties, but they're still a big predatory reptile with upwards of 3,000 pounds of pressure in their jaws. Look at those teeth. What a monstrous size alligator. Come on, Chubby. Woo -hoo -hoo. Come on, big boy. There we go. Nice big meal for my big boy. All right, so we're in the snake house. We're gonna try something new. The baby king cobra that I've got right here, uh, I, we still haven't thought of a name, so comment what you think we should name this guy. He ate a corn snake all on his own. You see him? He's right there. So I have a dead, frozen thawed corn snake right here. I'm going to offer it him. We're going to see if he'll eat on camera. I don't think he will, but it's worth a try. Oh, he actually looks a little interested. Look at that. I have not fed him myself yet, but he, I don't know. Look at that. He actually looks a little bit interested. A lot of activity for him, so he's real defensive. This is actually a Malaysian-Indonesian King Cobra hybrid, so he's gonna have some interesting colors when he gets older. Not really sure if he's gonna be a, a beige or if he's gonna be more of like an olive coloration. But um, man, a second ago he was showing a little bit of interest. Let me see if he'll come back over here for a second. You want this? You want this, huh? You see it? You want this snake? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. Look at that. He, oh, oh, oh. No way. So this is the first time that he's eaten off of the tongs, guys. This is great news. He's eating on his own. No more force feeding or cyst feeding, which uh, causes stress, but you know, it's gonna keep him alive. And look at that, he's already working it down. Oh my goodness. Little baby King Cobra. Oh, they're so cute. You know, even when they're this small, they're still venomous, they're still dangerous, but me being a lover of King Cobras, I love to see the babies. They have the cutest little bug eyes when they're small. And look at his little tongue sticking out. He's like, yeah, it's pretty good. This is such good news, guys. I'm so glad I don't have to force feed the snake anymore and he can eat on his own. Great news for the future. And this means when I go out on trips or anything like that, I don't have to worry about anyone having to force feed this snake while I'm gone. They can just drop a corn snake in there and he can have a nice meal. And look, he's getting some size to him too. He's becoming a nice, beautiful little king cobra. And that's just a little corn snake, so it's a small little snack. And as he gets bigger, we'll start feeding him hatchling Burmese pythons from the Everglades. So uh, we'll get rid of those Burmese pythons that don't belong out there and he gets to eat a nice meal. Look at that, cute little bug eye. All right, now we definitely have to think of a name for him. So comment below, what should we name this baby king cobra? He's gonna be with us for a long time. Oh, epic. All right, beautiful people. We're gonna take care of King Tut, the Egyptian Cobra. He went to the bathroom, he shed his skin. He's looking good. Just wanna make sure he has a nice clean area before I leave town. He's a big snake. And he's nutty too. Woo, look at that big, beautiful, woo, Egyptian Cobra. What a badass snake. I got this guy when he was two feet long. And now he's become a monster. He's so heavy on the snake head. What's up, dude? He's actually chilled out. He's not as crazy as he used to be. He used to be really hectic to deal with. He would always hood up and poop on me when I would deal with him. But I still gotta be careful because he will bite anything. Uh, African covers can be a little sneaky. They have a deadly cocktail of venom. And you don't wanna make a mistake dealing with these snakes. Look how beautiful he is. Monstrous size snake. And in that new holding receptacle, we can get a good look at him. Just a big, beautiful chocolate cover from Africa. I love him. And he just shed his skin. So we got this nice, big, beautiful shed in here. Oh, nice whole shed. Cool. I'll keep this for some tours coming up soon. But uh, I'm just so happy. So much good stuff going on. That baby king cover finally ate. I'm going on a trip to Asia to go look for the red headed crate. And hopefully, king cobras in the wild. Maybe some elephants if I'm lucky. All right, I'll see you guys in a split. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah! All right, we're gonna take out King Tut. You can see he's just crawling around. You can really see the size of these snakes when they're stretched out in this big holding receptacle right here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. What a hood he's got on him. You gonna show off that hood some more? Be real careful, because these African snakes flip over their own body and they'll be chewing on you before you know it. Well, look at that. King Tut, the OG Cobra of the channel next to Big Bertha and Kevin. We're just gonna get him right into his area. We got him fresh water. Nice clean enclosure to go back into. Get them right into there. All right, nice and secure, good to go. You can see my Indian cover just went through shed, exploded out of that old skin. So we're gonna pull him out, clean his enclosure, take care of him, and then we're gonna end the episode with a bang. We got the Chinese sharp nose viper just exploded out of its old skin. So we're gonna have to deal with him too. You know, he's the craziest viper in the room. But check this out, beautiful Indian cobra. Same species of snake I was bitten by in India on that last trip. Look at that beautiful snake. Also known as the spectacled cobra because on the back of that hood, they have that pair of glasses. So we'll close that, nice and secure. Let's see what we got going on here. He actually just, oh, he's got like one big piece right here. Eh, it's a little bit broken up. We'll throw that away. We're gonna clean up this enclosure, make sure it's nice and beautiful for him. And I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so we got a nice clean enclosure to put this Indian cobra back into. And uh, big news, big news, later this year, we are going back to India. I know you guys, you guys love that India content. Um, obviously, we're gonna be real safe when we go out there, but we're gonna go to a different part of India so we can help relocate king cobras out of houses and go see some wild leopards and tigers. I think that's gonna be amazing. India is one of the most wild places left on the planet where you can still experience tigers, elephants, Cobras all on the edge of civilization were Clydes. And I love to go out to places like that to document people and animals living side by side and also try to help out and relocate snakes. Now next, we're dealing with Pinocchio, the sharp-nosed viper. Now this guy, 
is also nicknamed the 100 pacer because if you get bit, you have 100 steps left before you drop dead. We're gonna move this over here, just so we have some space to work. Just gonna open up this enclosure just like that. And now that you can see perfectly fine without that shed skin, he's gonna be looking with his eyes and using those heat seeking pits on his face. This snake has literally pogo launched. This snake has literally launched itself out of the enclosure before and landed on the floor. He is a intense viper. These guys are athletic. They have a very, very bad bite. And uh, they also just do not like getting handled. Look at that. He's going right up the hook. You gotta be so careful because he literally just starts targeting it. Relax, buddy. Whoa. Let me have the last thing I need him to do is turn around and just bite me on the hand. Badass pit viper from Vietnam, China, Taiwan. Look at that. Such a beautiful snake, but so cranky. Look at him shaking his tail right now. Kind of like a rattlesnake, or that's what a water moccasin would do, wagging its tail to let everyone know to stay away. And you can see he just busted out of that old skin, shed skin all over the place. Such an intense snake. Maybe one day we'll go look for a wild. Chinese sharpnose vipers and Mangsheng vipers in the future too. All right, so let's get this Chinese sharpnose viper back in the enclosure. Old Pinocchio. We've had a lot of good times with this snake, but I just love and respect him. I never want to push it too much with a snake like this or with any snake, because when you least expect it, they launch out and they latch right onto you. And he's actually got these like keeled scales, <laughs> like pyramid sharp scales for living amongst like limestone rock and stuff like that. Look at that. And they come in beige too, so it's really cool and unique when they're all black like that. I love it. I love y'all. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams. Do what makes you happy. Sometimes there's bumps in the road, nubs in the road. Keep moving, trucking on, do what you love, stick to what you love. I love you guys, and I'm sticking to this. Yeah! Rock and roll, I'll see you in Asia! Yeah! Ah, <laughs>